What's up everybody, Eric Soulbox at the shop today. I just got home from Seattle. I ran down and picked up some more sheets of aluminum for the next batch of uh, panniers. And I'd been noticing on Marketplace that there was gonna be an estate sale um, down that way. Um, that's not supposed to start until Saturday. And I was looking through the pictures and I could just barely make out that there was some machinist stuff that was gonna be available. Um, I'm always all about more machining tools. The problem with trying to buy used machining tools is that a lot of times it's gonna come from a machinist who really knows the value. But this was an estate sale, and so I'm like, a lot of times with an estate sale, it's just somebody else's stuff, so nobody really cares about it so much anymore. They just want it gone. And so I started thinking to myself yesterday, yesterday being Thursday, that what I need to do is see if I can get my foot in the door and see all this stuff early. So I reach out and I say, hey, I'm gonna be down that way on Friday. If you're available a day early, I would stop. I'm interested in some of the tools. I'll stop in there really quick and probably buy a bunch of that stuff from you. And uh, even though in the ad, it was pretty much specifically stated that the sale, did, the sale wasn't gonna start until Saturday and she would not give up the address until two hours before it starts. So she still hasn't even actually put the address out publicly it won't until tomorrow but my game plan was get out there early before anybody else has a crack at this stuff and uh, see what's available and see what kind of a deal i can make so i went down i walk in the room where all the machinist stuff is i grab a couple boxes and basically i just took all the machinist stuff that i saw put it into a couple of boxes and said you know i figure this is probably worth about x amount and I'll tell you at the end of the video what I paid for this stuff after I show you all of it. Um, and I don't mean to brag um, when I'm showing this stuff either, but um, I did get a really good buy here. And so I thought we would go through it and I'll show you what all I got. Um, actually on the way home, she sent me another text, the woman that I got this stuff from. It turns out these were her dad's tools. And part of what she wanted to see was that she had no idea what this stuff was. She wanted to see it go to somebody that would actually make use of it, which is me. Um, and she actually sent off a, a really nice text to me on my way home, thanking me for coming down and getting this stuff. So even though I feel like I got a really good buy on this, I know I got a really good buy on it. She's thrilled on her end too. I wish the circumstances were better. Her father's going into assisted living situation. Um, you know, this part of his life has come to an end and it's unfortunate, you know, one day this will be happening to me too. Probably all of these tools in this room, Asher will probably be dealing with the same thing. And you know, it's just, it's a sad part of life, but you know what, it's coming. So anyway, if you guys want to go through this stuff and uh, see how I did, we'll take a look and see what I got. So here's an indicator. Actually, when I first grabbed this, it was real sticky. It didn't want to come back into place. This is nothing special. Actually, he's got it marked as for reference only. Oh, I forgot to mention also that um, this guy, what he did for a living um, is that he went out and tested stuff um, for accuracy and stuff um, um, on a commercial level, I guess, to some degree. So when he measured something, he wanted for it to be very, very accurate. I've got tools in here that actually um, have been tested and are, are actually dialed in correctly um, and very exact. So this, it was kind of sticky. And as I had assumed, that was really because sometimes if you put a set screw into one of these, it'll become a little sticky, but it looks like it works okay. No name brand on it, although a lot of the stuff in here is brown and sharp, Starrett, et cetera, et cetera. This just looks to be something cheap. Not sure what he had going on with this bar. This is one of the things I saw in the picture, and I thought for sure what he had was this was gonna be set up to be able to tram in a mill, but there's no way to hook it to a collet, so I don't know exactly what this was about. One thing that is nice about this is that it came with this 22 piece dial indicator point set. So it's got all the different points that go to it. It's cheap Chinese stuff probably, but who cares? You know, it's something that I'll actually use instead of being scared of ruining something good anyway. Um, thread measuring wires. I don't currently own a set of these. Um, I've never been in a position where I needed to have them. It looks like everything is in here it's got the conversion chart and everything the tables for doing metric and standard both looks like everything is here 
Um, you know, if I ever have to measure a thread that way, it'll be nice to just have these in my machinist box and know that I am capable of doing it. Um, so I got a set of those. Um, you know, believe it or not, I only actually own one set of one, two, three blocks. And so here's a set of one, two, three blocks. I don't know what these are. I looked for a name on them. Doesn't appear to be anything special. I would think if this was high end that it would probably have a name on it. But either way, for fixturing and stuff on the mill, um, I've been wanting to get, to bump up from only owning one set. And so, you know, there's a set. There's a set that uh, of one, two, three blocks also. Chicago brand, kind of an off brand. Um, although they do look very, very nice. These are really like, the edges are very, very crisp. Like this, it's got more of a, a little bit of like a rounded edge to it. Um, these are nice and they're in the box. So now I've got three sets. Um, little angle plate for uh, fixturing and stuff. Got lots of threaded hole opportunities on this. I don't have anything like this currently. Um, I've got a surface plate and stuff. Um, this is one of those things that, you know, I would very much like to have that I don't, uh, didn't currently own, that, you know, there's so much stuff machinist-wise that I would like to add to this shop that this is just honestly something that I would really love to have but probably wouldn't have blown the money on anytime real soon to get. So I'm pretty thrilled to have that. Um, some of this stuff is redundant, like uh, twist, can't twist clamps. These are awesome. Um, and I own several sets of them. This is a couple of the larger ones, like what I've got. You can never have too many of them. Um, of course, I'm going to want to own more of them. These are just a really nice tool to have around the shop. Um, so some of it's redundant. Some other stuff I got that, you know, I just would have never really gone out of my way to go and buy. Um, here's a little sign vise. I don't own a sign vise. I've been looking at them. I've been wanting to get like a little five inch sign vise. I don't have the uh, the little uh, gauge blocks that you need to operate this properly, but that gives me a good reason to go buy a set of them. Um, and once again, this says for reference only, which is basically just um, the stuff he was doing needed to be really, really accurate. Everything's got his last name. I'm assuming that's his last name anyway, engraved on it. I saw the red box on this. I thought for sure it was gonna be Sterrett, but it's not. It's just, you know, it says micro five inch sign bar. It's a tool that I don't current, didn't currently own that I've literally just now been looking at um, for a specific project in which I was gonna have to do some very, very uh, accurate angles. And to do those angles, you need a sign bar. I would have bought a five inch just like this. Now I don't have to. Thrilled to have it. Um, these, I've actually got this exact same general angle finder. Actually, I've got like three or four of these. I've got one plastic one that's worth nothing really. A couple other metal ones, one just like this. This is the nicest of all of them. Um, so I've got another one of these. I keep these over by the metal break because when I make bends, sometimes I wanna, you know, I wanna make sure, you know, am I bending at 45 degrees? So I'll probably keep that one in my machinist box because all the other ones are over here by the break. Um, Magnetic base and the arms. Um, don't really need another one of these. Actually, I kind of do because I'm thinking about building a stop for my vise on the mill. And I was thinking about sacrificing. I've got uh, three or four of them over there in my machinist box. And I was thinking I could sacrifice one because I'm thinking I want these arms and I will repurpose them for the idea for the, uh, the stop that I'm thinking about building. So, um, I'm not entirely certain that everything is here for this. I'm not seeing how I can hook this on here. Um, it looks like the hole is too small. Um, it's probably all there, but anyway, even if it isn't, I can use that for an upcoming project. Um, I've never had any way um, to measure hole depth. And so I've been looking at, um, at hole gauges this is something that was in here that's interesting. This is um, handmade. There's a little set screw back here. And if I'm correct, I think that this is gonna go right in here. So he made this. And so you could set this over a bore and measure to the bottom of it. Um, just a kind of a neat little tool that somebody handcrafted that 
You know, if I hadn't gone there and bought all of this stuff, you know, maybe nobody would have. Maybe this stuff would have ended up at the Goodwill or, you know, God forbid, at the landfill or something. Um, maybe somebody can tell me what this is. I just saw this, this is some sort of a tool. Looks like this is designed to hold an indicator, like so. And it's got an arm on it. And I think this might be part of it. There's a spring hanging out of this. This once again looks like something you would use to sweep and tram in your mill, but um, I'm not positive of that. You got a little screw here. I thought maybe this was a cam, but it just looks round and a spring. If you know what this is, enlighten me. Same with this, I don't know what this, I don't know. I thought for sure it was gonna be to tram in a mill. So, got some odds and ends. Uh, oh, here's the other piece to the uh, magnetic holder. That's the piece I was looking for. So it is all there. Um, nice tap wrenches, set of three. Oh, one's even got a tap in it. I wonder what size. Even under mag magnification, my eyes have gotten so bad that I can't even read it under a magnifier. But anyway, uh, three set of, these are nice. These are uh, pretty well built and heavy. I don't see any name on them, but there's three of them. And so a lot of times what I do with these is like, I'll put a tap in here and then the correct bit that needs to go with it and then I'll zip tie them together and I just leave it set up because a lot of times like I'll use a lot of like M8 or 1032 I almost always leave them already set up ready to go to work because I only I only screw and tap like certain sizes it's just the stuff that I keep in stock here at the shop and so having three more where I can have those set up already will be nice uh, some machinist squares and these are actually nicer than my current ones. They're just a little bit, these are cheap ones from Grizzly, uh, but these, you can see they're, they're a bit thicker and a bit heavier and more stout. Don't see any indication of a name on these, but a set of three, definitely handy. You can never have too many of them. And that way, like I'm starting to get surface rust on mine and stuff. And, I'll continue to use these as they're just getting kind of beat up being around the shop and stuff. So um, here we go. Best test. Brown and sharp. Uh, measures to uh, half thou. Black face on it. This is very nice. This is something that I would have really wanted. Like if I was to go and buy one and could buy what I want. This is what I would have gotten, so I'm pretty, pretty stoked. You can see this is one of the tools that's been through calibration. Last time it was done was on 516 of 08. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I think it was good from 08 to 09 of 516, uh, room number five. This might have been stuff like, I don't know specifically where he was working at, um, but... Uh, Room five, I don't know if that's a tool room or whatever. Maybe a lot of times stuff I think uh, in my area ends up coming from like Boeing um, because that's, you know, that's who's gonna employ most of the machinists in my area. But it's got all the all the connection doodads and everything are already in here. Um, the little wrenchy bob things down in there. So super thrilled to have this because I've actually been using a cheap Chinese one that I got, uh, where is it? I'll show it to you if I can find it. Um, yeah, I don't know where it is. I've been using a cheap one that I bought off of Amazon. It was like 22 bucks and it does the job and I don't have to worry about damaging it or whatever, but now I've got a really nice one. It's cool that it's in the case. Check this out. Michi Toyo, zero to one inch, digital. I stopped at the Walmart on the way home. I bought a new battery. The battery was dead on it. It was calibrated last time, uh, the same time that other stuff was calibrated. So 2008, 
And I guess the calibration's good uh, for a year, evidently. Uh, not sure what the orange on the back here is all about. I thought maybe you had the cover glued on or something. I don't know what that is, but um, really a very, very nice digital micrometer. This doesn't appear to be the original box because it doesn't want to close all the way. Um, I stopped and bought a three pack of batteries at the Walmart on the way home just to make sure to see if this would work. When you turn it all the way down, man, it zeroes all the way out and it's right on zero. Thimble works. It's got the lock. It'll do metric or uh, inch. Really a very nice tool. Um, something that I would really, once again, love to have in my shop, but it would have never probably dropped the coin to buy it brand new. Um, matter of fact, I've got a Federal um, over there that's got the digital, uh, well, I guess it's not digital, but it's got, it's got a meter built into it that's pretty nice. Um, but this is definitely a come up on my part. Um, once again, uh, unable to check depth, uh, depth of holes has been an issue in the shop. So I've been looking at, at stuff to, uh, to get that rectified. And this Starrett, um, hole gauge, well, this one's marked for reference only, but it was calibrated in the past, but now it's got a for reference only over the top of it. So evidently the, uh, they must have run out, but everything is here to this. It's Starrett, um, real nice. So, the moment of truth. So, I basically, I put all of this stuff into a couple of boxes and went and talked to her and said, I'll give you 150 bucks for all of it if that works for you. And she was thrilled to take the money and I'm thrilled to have the tools. Um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the content here. Uh, let me know what you think this stuff is worth. I think I did pretty well for myself, but uh, anyway, I'm going to enjoy using them, and I know that she is glad to see that they went to somebody that's actually going to make use of them. So anyway, Eric Solobox, I'm going to get back to work. I will talk to you all later.